In this part, we are going to see how we implemented the authentication in context in the demo that you can find on GitHub. You can find it in the Godot directory in the Nakama Godot demo repository linked in the video description. Let's just talk about how it works first. The user enters their credentials. You verify that the email address has the right form. So you press enter or you log in. The server isn't running, so it's not going to work there, but you send a request to the server to authenticate the user. I won't talk about the UI too much. The only notable thing is that the UI does not communicate with the server. It only emits signal and another script, in that case, main menu, is the one sending requests to the server. So when you press enter or click the login button, the UI says, okay, there's a login requested or the login button was pressed and the user entered this email address and this password. The main menu receives it in an on login and register login uh, pressed function that you can see here on the screen. This one is only going to disable the interface and call a function named authenticate user async. It takes the email, the password, and also it tells if the user wants us to remember their email. Then authenticate user async is going to use a function similar to the one we coded in the basic tutorial here represented by server connection dot login async, but it's going to do so in a loop. The loop is going to have a counter of server request attempts. It's an integer that we increment by one every time we make a new request up to a maximum number of attempts. And every time we try to log in the user. When the result of that call that server connection dot login async call is okay. We get out of the loop and we can then save the email on the server and open the character menu. There is a bit of extra code to write some error code, optional error code on the status bar. So this is what we can see here, error code to the request failed. It's a response from the Nakama API and we can re-enable the login and register interface if we got an error and we couldn't authenticate the user. Now let's look at that login async function. So I'm going to click control click on server connection and head down to login async. That function doesn't do much. It mostly delegates the call to the authenticator. So I'm going to open the authenticator. Let's see a control click works. This is a delegate class that only handles the authentication, logging in, registering an account, and also storing the user's authentication token. Because when you authenticate on a server, you get a token, some string, that is valid for a certain amount of time. So the next time the user logs in to the game, we don't have to do a server request, we can log them in instantly saving them a bit of time and the server a bit of work. Okay, so the login async function is similar to what we coded in the simple example. The main difference has to do with that token here. We're going to see how this works in the next part. If we have a token, we are going to restore the client's session from the previous time the user was logged in. Otherwise, we are going to authenticate the user using their email. Note that we did not supply a username here, only the email and password, and that we don't want to automatically register an account. That's the fourth parameter. Then, if the user could log in, could authenticate successfully, we write the authentication token to a file. Now, let us see how the authentication token works. We created a helper class at the bottom of the authenticator script that's going to write and recover the user's oath token. Here's how it works. So when we authenticate on the server, the server answers with a session that has a token parameter. We pass it to the session file workers write auth token method. It's just going to write a file to the user directory and the file is named 
we use the file object to save the file and encrypt it using a password here passed to the function as well. So this is all part of Goto, right? We store the user's email and token on two separate lines and close the file. And so then when we want to load the file back in, we create a new file object, open the encrypted file using, again, open encrypted with pass. This is a method of the file class. We pass in the file path. We want to read the file, so the file.read constant, and the password to decrypt the file. If the file was read successfully, we can get the first line and store it as our auth email. And for the token, we get the second line, then close the file. You must close the file manually in Goto. Finally, we ensure that the email we pass to the function, the user's email, matches the email that we had in the file and we can return the of token that way. Otherwise, we'll return an empty string. Back to our login async function. This is why we check if the token is not an empty string because the session file worker will always return a string. It's just, if we don't have a valid token, it's going to return an empty string. In which case, we can skip ahead, skip to the second part of the function and authenticate the user. But if we have an of token, then we can restore the session using the Nakama client API that has a restore session method. And we have to ensure that the new session created or returned by that method is valid and it's not expired because every of token has an expiration date. The last thing I have to mention is that our login async is meant to be a coroutine. And if we have a valid oath token, we'll return early from the function. We must yield somewhere, but the thing is, if you have an oath token already, you're not going to communicate with the server. You're going to restore the previous session object using the client API. So because of that, we have to add the extra yield here and we use engine.getMainLoop and it has an idle frame signal that we can use to wait for the next frame. That way we just wait for one frame and return from the function, making the caller when you try to yield on login async work as expected. You also have a register async function that only registers the user and uh, then we still have to log in. So we separated the two operations so that when a user clicks on register, they can register a new account. And when they click on login, it's not going to register a new account for them. That's the main difference. And that is how we authenticate the user in the final demo.